Hi guys, today we are dealing with the canine viral disease section. Uh, this is canine parvo infection, which is a very common viral infectious gastrointestinal disease found in pups and the dogs. Now we move to the introductory part. It's an infectious contagious viral disease of dogs which spread from dog to dog by direct contact with the faces or indirect contact with the faces of an infected dog. The dog we left the dog untreated, the mortality rate will be high and the cause of mortality will be endotoxemia and acute hypovolemic shock. Canine parvovirus disease was first recognized in 1978. Uh, actually, it was determined detected in the sentry dogs, right? The fucking guard dogs. Now we move to the etiological agent. Uh, the family of this virus is Parvoviridae. The parvo means small. Canine Parvovirus 2, CPV2, is the causative agent. It is a non enveloped single stranded DNA virus. Produce large intranuclear inclusion bodies in the intestinal cells, and the viruses are very stable. And they also hemagglutinate red blood cells. The synonyms are parvo, CPV2, canine parvo, CPV, etc. Synonyms. Now we move to the susceptible host. Dogs are the main susceptible host, and the pups are more chance. Chances of infection in pups are high. And as usual, like every disease, mortality depends on the viral disease, viral load, stage of emaciation, health status, etc. Although wild animals can also get the infection. Now we move to the route of infection. Dogs are infected via the oronasal route by exposure to infected animals' secretion. That is, if at all they are coming in contact with urine, saliva, feces, and vomitus of an infected dog by direct oral route or nasal route, they can get the infection. In the domestic cycle of infection, feces of infected dog is the main reservoir of the virus. Incubation period is 3 to 8 days normally, but it can vary according to the health status of the dog. Now we move to the pathogenesis. Healthy dogs come into contact with the feces of urine of infected dogs directly. Feces or urine. I'm sorry for the spelling of the feces. Infected dogs directly or indirectly. Virus gain entry into the body through upper respiratory tract or buccal cavity and get lodged into the buccal mucosa and laryngeal lymph nodes. So they will be multiplying in the laryngeal lymph node cells and they will be rapidly producing their cells in the rapidly dividing cells of pharyngeal tonsils and they multiply and they produce several copies of virus. The viral copy comes out of the cell by breaking the cell. So there is a small gap in the cell entropelia. So there will be what happening disseminated intravascular coagulation will be happening. Most of the virus then gets settled in the GI tract. Now, this is what how a parvovirus causes parvoviral enteritis inside the nucleus of the intestinal cell. They are producing electrolytic imbalance. Gut membranes will be damaged. Now we move to the clinical signs. Actually, there is three type of clinical syndrome which is age related first one is for 2 to 12 days the age it's not like normally generalized neonatal disease 2 to 12 days old means neonatal disease it's uncommon it's not actually finding and whenever the pups are 3 to 8 weeks myocarditis will be there however myocarditis can develop from the infection in the uterus that means whenever the pup is in the uterus of its mother and the mother get infected, the mother can transmit the virus vertically through the placenta to the neonate inside her womb. And the neonate can have myocardial necrosis. Now it is less common. And now, whenever the dog is 3, 2 to 4 months old, the panleukopenia enteritis complex. That is most common paro. Symptoms are lethargy, uh, vomiting, fever due to viremia. Bloody diarrhea with very bad smell. See, the very bad smell is a pathognomonic sign. Like, uh, if at all, we can sense the smell of the feces. We can 
predicted that this disease is paro. That means it has a very, very bad smell. Blood is actually uh, finding in the diarrhea portion due to breakage of intestinal cells. The gut is broken and cells are broken and they are coming through the feces and also disseminated in intravascular coagulation cells. Actually, the cause of death will be acute hypovolemic shock, electrolytic imbalances and the electrolytic imbalance is actually due to dehydration by vomiting and diarrhea. Now you can see the picture of dogs having diarrhea. Bloody diarrhea, you can see here bloody stains. Bloody stains are found in the diarrhea. Now we move to the lesions. What are the main lesions? Microscopically, they produce large intranuclear inclusion bodies in neurons as well as in intestinal villi cells, cells of Langerhans and cells of liver. The liver also get affected. Now cerebellar hypoplasia. Now we are moving to the macroscopic bloody spots and hemorrhagic spots in the intestine, necrosis of the lumen and the chance of secondary bacterial infection in the intestine is also high. Salmonella infection is common in parvopox. Actually, these are the macroscopic lesions, the intestine. Actually, near the anal area, it will be bloody spots and they form crust. And this can act as a... Actually, this acts as a, an invitation for many other microbes, causing skin lesions, pruritis, etc. Now this is a microscopic lesion. You can find large intranuclear inclusion bodies. These are the large intranuclear inclusion bodies. Now diagnosis. Tentative diagnosis on the basis of history, clinical feature, direct ELISA kit for virus detection in feces and other microbiological technical tools. Also immunoglobulin M capture that is immunoglobulin M against the parvo virus will be captured in the LISA. Prevention and control proper hygiene should be practiced and dogs should be properly cleaned, kennels should be properly cleaned, vaccination should be practiced. The main vaccines used are mega vaccines and nobi vaccines. And this is the nobi vaccines and this is the canogen parvo vaccine. This is Vanguard vaccines for comp compound vaccines. This is vaccine. Thank you.